everyone, welcome to Simple Foods for You podcast. I am Neil, hanging out with Lisa. What's up, Lisa? Hello. Y'all, we are on the road going to a farmer's market today. And we decided to start this podcast and just start talking about our love for food and cooking and culinary things and blah, 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 blah. So today is not going to be too deep. This is our first one. And we decided to do it differently. Instead of coming on camera, we decided to just talk about um, our love for food and everything like that. I grew up in a huge family down south. It seemed like my mom cooked a uh, holiday meal almost every other day for a while. And it's just, we were just, (laughs) I experienced everything from deer to turkey to liver, sometimes squirrel and rabbit. I didn't like that. And thank goodness they never made us eat chitlins. So I've never ever tasted that unless you, you guys say that bacon count is chitlins. I don't know, but I've never experienced that. So Lisa, where did your love of food, snacks, where did that start? It started in Germany. Whoa, Germany. Well, I was a kid and um, I think it made the, big, the biggest impact on my taste buds because we experienced Brochen, um, Wiener Schnitzel, sauerkraut, you know, hot mustard, um, bratwurst, stuff like that. So Wait a minute. Those are the things that I was used to growing up besides my grandmother's cornbread dressing when I was like three or four. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. We were in the U.S. eating McDonald's and Hardee's, and Burger King, and stuff like that. And you over there, you over there eating stuff I can't even pronounce. Yeah, it was wonton soup. It was all kinds of things that just still impact me today. Where it's like I'm always thinking about that stuff because I don't, I don't get Wiener Schnitzel a lot, or if ever. But I'm always thinking about it. So it, it's had the biggest impact on me. I'm, lo- I'm still looking for places where I can get brochin and, bro- and the right bratwurst. So it's obvious that your parents were in the military, right? right. Obvious, right? I, I know that, but they don't know that. So what was it like when you came back to the States from eating all of that, uh, I ain't going to say elegant food, but just international food? What was it like coming back and going, like I said, going back to some chicken nuggets? <laughs> We had McDonald's out there. Oh, that's true, that's true. I went crazy over Big Macs. Okay. And I never forgot that Thousand Island dressing. And so when we came to America, I was looking for that. And when I tasted pizza, different kinds of pizza and other kinds of burger, because I I was just around a certain kind of burger, a certain kind of pizza, and that's what I got used to. So I was a little shocked. Wow. So and my dad, he was a cook, so he could he kept cooking those things that he cooked for us in Germany. Okay. So, but once he started, once I started getting older, and we started doing more things out of the house and in school and with other families and stuff, it was like, you know, I don't like this. Now it seems like you said you was breaking down the the secret sauce in the in the Big Mac, right? So when did that start? When did you start caring? Because a lot of kids don't care about the, all they know is do they like this? They don't like it. They don't care. It seemed like you were somebody that was breaking down what this tasted like. Did you start wondering what ingredients were in there or that was just something you're that not, came later? You're not gonna believe me, but when I was four, three or four, I started breaking down my grandmother's cornbread dressing. Because, because that sage that was in there, it did something to my, my taste buds. And I was like, what is this? Uh, and so I just started watching her, you know, as I grew up, you know, several times making it. And then I recreated it like when I got married, after we got married and just started trying to figure out what I tasted in that cornbread dressing. And sure enough, I was able to recreate that. So... Growing up, were you a person that you were more like an eater, or you were more like, I want to make this food, or was it a combination? Where did it... It was a combination, because they, my grandmother gave us a lot of stuff. We had the cornbread with the crackling in it. I love the crackling, so I never forgot that. When we were outside and being unruly and stuff, she gave us pig feet, so we sucked on that. What? Um, what? Sometimes she gave us octopus legs. A pig toenail? Sometimes, sometimes she gave us octopus legs, and we sucked on those and ate up those which is why I had no problem eating squid when I first um, started getting out eating more things so it was it was like I wanted to taste everything and I wanted to at least the stuff
what's now? Right. But you ate menudo, right? I didn't touch menudo. Oh, don't. Why do you want to lie to the people? I had to endure the smell of menudo, but I did not touch that with a 10 foot pole. So, when did you, when do you think you got, so, so, okay, what, what did you end up landing on? What's your favorite type of food? What culture produces your favorite? Or do you even have a favorite? I don't have a favorite because, but if I had to choose and somebody said, this is what you have to eat for ever, it would have to be seafood. Because I, I just love fish. I love the way you can grill it, the way it gets crispy. I love the salmon. Um, like I said, the squid, lobster, shrimp. So you just gonna eat? The, you just gonna eat the muscles, entire ocean? Every everything. So you just gonna eat? You just gonna scavenge the entire ocean? I could, I could. I mean, I haven't. I've never tasted sea urchin yet. I would love to taste that. Yeah. And I love caviar. I'm, so I, seafood would have to be my ultimate favorite. I'm sorry, sea urchin when they just cut the thing open and then dig out the little whatever. It, that, yeah. that does not look appetizing. Why would anybody want that? Well, because they said it was a certain taste to it, and if it's anything like caviar with that your taste and um, I would love to I would love to try what it what if it just tastes like dirt well if you don't clean it it will uh, 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 uh. so okay okay so you, you don't didn't really get properly you didn't really give me a style you said the type of food you like fish but that really wasn't a style like style? Italian blah blah, blah oh, you know from oh, that oh I see um I would have to say French no German why I would you have all, to say French and German. You're just always trying to rep Germany. You always, I, but then you have Asian and, and those Asian flavors. See, that's why I don't have a favorite. Okay, all right, all right, all right. It's too hard. All right, all right, I got you, I got you. All you right. have the Middle East and their flavors, and it's just too much. Okay, I'm going to ask you this. I'm going to go to another step, but I'm going to ask you this first. What is your... Okay, drum roll, please. You don't have one, but in your mind, drum roll. What is your favorite seasoning or herb to cook with if you have one what is your dill. favorite dill yes dill why i will put that on everything <laughs> and i do like garlic i mean of course garlic is, is is nice but there's just something about dill and what it does to seafood that just drives me nuts wow who introduced you to to, to uh dill i almost said garlic but um i i tasted it inside of something and I was like, what is that? Because uh, every time I taste something, one or two flavors will stand out the most. Okay. If, if they have something, you know, a, a nice array of seasonings or herbs. And that one stood out to me because I tasted it in one dish and then another. And I was like, that's that same flavor. And I, so I just, ever since then, I was just trying to figure out what that was. And when I found out what it was, I was like, okay, I'm a, I love dill. So that's if, why I love it on salmon. That's true. That's true. Um, what is your favorite meal? If you you know if if you had to pick, if you had to go to that that one meal that you would prepare. No, no, no. Let me back up. When did you start getting the confidence to start cooking food? What? How old were you? Were you like everybody else? Started boiling eggs, making rice. What was that like? No, I was actually lazy for the first like when I became a mom. You know, you, you would think that I would make foods like that, but I actually feel bad because I made chicken nuggets and pizza and microwave burgers and stuff like that because I was being lazy. I didn't start cooking until I was like maybe in my mid to late 30s. Well, you just experimenting, just trying to see what people going to think about it because you never really well, done it Well, because I was scared. I was like, I have all this energy to want to create these meals, but I don't have any recipes that I follow. So everything came out of my head and I wasn't confident with that. So that's why I didn't do anything. Gotcha, gotcha. And so then I started experimenting with, okay, let me let me try to make the cornbread. Let me try to make this cornbread dressing. And when my sister tasted it or my dad tasted it, and they were like, it's almost it it, it almost surpasses grandma's, that's when I knew maybe I need to try a little bit more. Gotcha, gotcha. And so now, after uh, cooking for six months, uh, six just left. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so now, if you, if you just say, man, I want to cook me something, mm -mm -mm, I'm going to sit down, I'm going to make this, I'm going to take my time, no matter how long it takes, and I'm going to eat and experience this food, and I'm going to enjoy the process, what meal is that that you're going to enjoy? The shopping for it, you're going to enjoy 
the, the cooking it and you're gonna enjoy sitting down and just partaking in that. What does that mean? My, my grandmother made a meal that, and my dad, and then my dad made one, and it was like the, the heavens opened up <laughs> and the angels came down, and that was that was the meal. And it was it was roast, it was gravy, it was mashed, mashed potatoes, and it was cornbread and some green beans, I believe. And that is the meal that if it's if I stretched it for seven straight days, I would eat it for breakfast, lunch, and dinner for no, seven Amber, straight she days. She would. Mm, she would. If there was that much of it, because so, at, so, because day after day, those those flavors keep that just, is true. just melding together. That and is they, true. And they turn into a different flavor. How about that third or fourth day? So, yeah. what is it like shopping for oh, a roast? Oh, and, the, and, and the pinto beans. Came but, that was what it was, pinto beans. But but you you skipped a step. What is it like shopping for those? And what are you looking for in a roast? What look are you like? Are you doing those uh, 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 Bob Evans potatoes? Or are you peeling no. your own? What, uh, cook? Tell us about that. Come on. I'm I lately I I've been doing the the whole potatoes like you you quarter them so that all the gravy can be infused in the potato. And that's really good to me. I like when the potato is like full of the gravy. But I get like chuck roast. I um, I get everything fresh because I just like the way, I just like the cooking process. It's very relaxing. But I also like um, creating it myself. And then when I taste it, it's like Christmas. All right. So what is your, what is your trifecta, not trifecta, but what are your, 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 your super friends when it comes to herbs and seasons? What are the seasons? You can't tell everybody everything right now, but what is the thing that you know, if you're going to cook a great meal, you're probably going to have these herbs and seasonings around. I know garlic has to be there. Has to. Onion powder has to be there. Has because to. there's something about onion powder that is phenomenal. Right. Um, salt and pepper, obviously. Um, Particular type of salt and pepper you prefer or? Uh... Now I'm I'm becoming a fan of peppercorns. You know I've never done that before, but I like the way um, fresh grated pepper tastes. It's very unique. I always thought it was just some hot spicy black nuisance, but right. now I, I realize how it actually brings flavors out. So I appreciate it. But those are the main things that I would have: is the onion, the garlic, the salt, and pepper. Because of that umami flavor that they always have. Right. Okay. Okay. And now smoked paprika. Why? Why? Why that? It's something different about smoked paprika. You can put it on anything. I mean, paprika, the regular kind, I normally just use it for like deviled eggs. Mm -hmm. But smoked paprika, you can use it on steak, chicken. Mashed, uh, not mashed potatoes, but maybe baked potatoes, stuff like that. Just different things. It's just very versatile. Everybody, as y'all can tell, we can talk about food, you know, probably exhaustively for hours, more than likely. Um, we want you guys to stay connected to. If we're not eating it. Yeah. <laughs> we want you guys to stay connected to the podcast. Please like and subscribe. Tell a friend about uh, the Simple Foods for You podcast with uh, Lisa. And Neil, Neil and Lisa, we hope you enjoyed today. If you have anything you want us to talk about, any recipes you may want us to try out, make sure y'all hit us up in the comment section. Till next time, happy eating, y'all. Cooking, shopping, whatever it is, all things food. See ya.